Well, get ready. Balloon Fiesta is only 10 days away. That's it. And the big question this year with all the construction at Paseo and I-25, how is it going to affect traffic? Well, here's the good news. Both directions of I-25 should have three lanes open, much like it is now. Paseo del Norte will be open to traffic too, but your best bet is really just to avoid that road altogether. Take Tramway or Alameda off the interstate instead. A lot of the work that we're performing right now uh, will be offline, so um, we plan on not slowing down. Uh, we do plan on, on minimizing any impacts to the traffic during the fiesta. You know, it's usually bad that time anyway. And we have a list of all the lane closures for Balloon Fiesta. Get that on our website at krqe.com. And do not forget, Balloon Fiesta begins October 4th. You can catch all of it if you're not going out there right here on KRQE. There's top story this half hour. Part of Google is moving into Moriarty, and the state says it is just the beginning as far as job growth. Google recently bought Titan Aerospace. Titan makes solar powered drones that the company wants to use to bring internet access to remote parts of the world. Google will work out of two hangars at the Moriarty Airport. Construction has already started. Yesterday, the company announced that over the next five years, they'll bring about 200 new jobs to the area. The state says now other aerospace companies are planning on moving there too, though no companies have yet to be named. Uh, 200 new jobs and of course the, the uh, spin-off businesses that this will create also where there will, they will be uh, other types of jobs. The state is allocating a million dollars to beef up water and sewer lines to attract other companies. The Bernalillo County Commission is considering incentives to lure in three companies that could hire a lot of people. The first is New Mexico Food Distributors, which grew out of the Little Anita's chain. Also, flagship food group, which makes 505 Salsa, is considering moving its operations here. The third company is being kept a secret. All of this means about 200 potential jobs. The commission is now considering give, giving them millions in revenue, internal revenue bonds, that is, to get them here. The approval could come as early as next month. Time right now is 534. A New Mexico inmate is suing the state, claiming prison officials are not letting him worship Satan properly. Yes, the prison system makes accommodations for a very wide range of religions, but where does that leave the devil. That's the question this morning. Bernard Pritchard here is now suing, saying he does not get the same opportunities to worship, in his case, Satan, as believers of more mainstream faiths. And he's asking for 140 grand in damages for that. The Corrections Department does not want to talk about that lawsuit, but does say it does what it can to accommodate inmates. Uh, they're given right, you know, to, to practice those faiths, and we want to make sure that we are respectful, you know, of, of their rights. The department keeps a list of practices for each religion, including holidays and dietary preferences, going so far as to allow worshipers of a Viking religion to use a sm small version of Thor's hammer, like you just saw, made out of cardboard in ceremonies. But how to accommodate Satanism is left up to each warden, we are told. 535, a new campaign is pushing young voters to get to the polls this November to make their voices heard when it comes to decriminalizing marijuana. The organizer of DecrimNM.org says young people are underrepresented in elections and wants to educate them on how he says reduced pot penalties can help the state. In case you missed it, the state Supreme Court says voters in Bernalillo and Santa Fe counties will get to answer poll questions on the ballot to get their opinions on decriminalizing pot. Yesterday, the group set up on UNM's campus to help people register to vote. It's time for us for our police officers to focus their resources on actual violent crimes in our city and to stop focusing on, on low-level offenders. The group says lots of students want to get involved and thinks it's because pot is a big issue for their generation. Well, taxpayers spent hundreds of millions of dollars on the spaceport here in New Mexico with the hopes of seeing the state make history, but we're still waiting for that history to be made. Spaceport America's biggest tenant still hasn't arrived and Virgin Galactic has pushed back the date of its first commercial flight to space yet again. I will be on the first flight uh, from New Wait, Mexico. Now, when will that take place? Uh, February or March of next year. All right, well that is what Virgin Galactic owner Richard Branson told David Letterman two weeks ago. Initial plans had Virgin Galactic's first commercial flight taking off three years ago and now work at the Spaceport America near Tier C has slowed down because they're not yet seeing the payoff in their budget. 
it's always a matching game. I mean, it's just like any other company matching up your revenues with your expenditures. So um, we're carefully managing our expenditures so um, we can handle, accommodate that as best we can. Those in the space tourism industry say it will be good news for New Mexico in the long term, despite the delays. Turning our attention now to some health news, the New Mexico Health Department is now screening babies who may have been exposed to tuberculosis while in the hospital in El Paso, Texas. According to health officials, an infected employee at Providence Memorial Hospital in El Paso worked in the nursery area. That person may have come in contact with as many as 50 babies from New Mexico. Officials say the exposure may have happened between September of last year and last month. The worker did not know he or she had TB until test results recently came back. And one person has died from the West Nile virus right here in New Mexico. State health officials say an 89-year-old Lee County man is dead. He is the first to contract the encephalitis strain, which is the more severe form of the disease. There are another seven human cases of West Nile virus in the state this year. They are in San Juan, DeBaca, Quay, Doña Ana, Grant, and Sandoval counties. West Nile is spread through the bites of mosquitoes. The elderly and babies are more likely to be infected. Well, 538 now. It's a documentary, 125 years in the making, and it showcases the history of UNM, showing us what the university was like when it was in the middle of the desert and just 100 students went there. Certainly a lot has changed at UNM and it's 125 years. Obviously, there are a lot more students now and a lot more buildings and a lot more build up around the city. The documentary is called The University of New Mexico at 125. It shows us all of what I just talked about, plus the effects the university has had on the city and the state. So this documentary, as far as I'm concerned, uh, helps the university not only tell its story, but understand who it is, what it is, and why it's become. Well, everybody the film premiered at the Hispanic Cultural Center last night in front of a full house, as you saw there. It'll show online in the next few weeks, and you can check it out on PBS in November. You can go catch the trailer to it. It's pretty interesting. It's on our website at krqe.com.